Hi. Um, so I'm Mike Daly of YoYo Games. Um, I'm here to talk to you about our fast cross-platform development system, um, which is GameMaker Studio 2. Uh, GameMaker has been around for a long time, um, since about 1999, so it's got a long evolution behind it. Uh, in the last couple of months, we've done a new version of it um, that's completely redesigned it. So, very quickly, going over what we started with, because it's been around for so long, uh, we've had a lot of developers using it over you know, 10, 15 years, um, and we're very used to this uh, interfacing way and doing things. Uh, it was an incredibly simple way of producing games. Lots of indies have been using it for years. It's very big in education, so it, it, it had, it had a lot of love for its old design. Um, unfortunately, the old design was very kind of Windows orientated. You just got Windows on top of Windows and trying to do anything more complicated than a simple game was tricky in it. So we decided when we were doing the new one to completely redesign this UI um, to try and make the workflow for not just beginners but professional developers a much slicker experience. Um, we were focusing mostly on how to go from designing and starting the game all the way through to production and releasing. Uh, we do lots of different platforms, so that was a new challenge as well. In the past, GameMaker was very much a Windows thing. Um, in the past few years, uh, we've made it export to lots of different platforms, but it was very um, a manual process to try and export to these things. So we're trying to just smooth all this out and make it as, as uh, rapid a development system as possible. While doing that, uh, we took time to basically overhaul the, the whole editing experience. Uh, we've got several new editors that we've re um, The room editor, level editor that we used to have um, was good for doing the simple kind of games that people were used to doing in Game Maker. Um, games and, and simple procedural things. We've decided that the new one will be basically fit for the, the, the next generation of the kind of 2D games, are very much 2D focused. So we wanted to be able to make a, a, a level editor that you can make any 2D game in. So we've basically done that along with a new image editor for mostly education and for programmers and people inside just for manipulating graphics. Because um, for any professional developer, you will probably still do your uh, graphics externally, but there is a full um, image editor in there. So, the new game maker um, has very much a rapid development system. Um, you can come in and you can generate games incredibly quickly. Um, we've proved this ourselves. We used to make games a lot ourselves, and we reckon you could do it about 80% faster in Game Maker than you would in any other tool. At one point, we were making a game a week, and just turning them out onto the app stores. Um, it's really just about how long you want to spend in the game. As long as the tool is letting you do that, then it's down to a developer choice to how long to spend in it. As I said, it's optimized completely for 2D. We're not pretending that you can do massive 3D games in it, but by doing that, it means the Im image editors, level editors, and all that kind of stuff is really designed just to get your 2D vision out as quickly as possible. One of the benefits and strengths of GameMaker is how fast you can get it onto other platforms. Lots of other tools, you've got to select, convert projects and all that kind of stuff. With us, you make your game in the IDE and then it's a drop down menu to pick the target you're going out to. You pick that and compile it and it goes out to that target. It's very fast. Make store ready packages. Um, that basically means that if you're making a game and you've got it in Windows, um, you can then start to do your iOS or Android ones, put in your touch controls, and when you build it for these things, you get your APK out, you can upload directly to the store. And that saves an awful lot of time and effort from platforms. Uh, we have lots of monetization things built in. We've got the IAP for um, any of the different platforms we support. Uh, we've got advertising in there um, and analytics to let you do the user engagement properly. IEP is a cross-platform IEP. So even though there's um, the Google one or the Apple one or Microsoft ones for the, their different platforms, we have a nice simple API level that you write it once, it will then go across all the different platforms. That makes it, again, 
reducing your time to actually have to implement all these different APIs and stuff. You don't have to worry about that. We have improved many of the different um, built-in features of GameMaker. Um, we've optimized all the, the tiling systems. The room and image editors now have layers in it, making it much easier to manipulate, hide features you don't want. You could put in um, collisions and, and um, pickups or whatever you want inside layers in the room editor, then hide them so that you can programmatically just looking at them. Um, and that speeds up a lot of your processing, making your game not nearly as heavy on your CPU, so that on devices like Android, it's just not that big a load. There is full cross-platform shaders in there as well. Again, it's another difference that we've got to try and improve that experience. If you're normally doing your own engine, then as you go from platform to platform, you have to do a new shader for every single platform you go on to, almost. So Microsoft has its own shader model. Android iOS have its own. Then you've got Mac, then you've got Xbox, consoles. They've all got their own shaders. So every time you do that, you've got to rewrite the shader. Uh, in our platform, if you write it in OpenGL ES, we will automatically convert it across all the different shaders. And that means, again, for most things in 2D, you don't really need to get that complicated. Uh, and it just saves you time. You write shader once, and it goes right across the board, even onto web. We do implement box 2D physics, um, and that's a fairly standard physics system. It, it's very powerful. Uh, it's a built into the IDE. You can define all your shapes and your properties in there so that your game can use them without a problem. And we do also have cross-platform networking. It's, it's built on sockets, but it does mean if you do um, your network code on for Windows, it will also work iOS, Android, and you can even play um, people from different platforms. You're not tied into Windows users playing Windows, Mac or Linux users playing themselves. You can just completely across the board, they can all play each other if you want to. So as I said, we've completely redone the, the, um, the level editing system. Um, it's all layer based so that each thing you can put down and have it in the order you need, exactly how you want it. Uh, it makes editing very simple because you can just hide sections that you want to edit. Um, we've got lots of different types of layers that you can put in now. Um, in the past, we had a specific background types of sprites. That's all gone now. We just have a specific layer for backgrounds. Um, you can color tint these, repeat them, so you can do nice parallax backgrounds easily. Uh, we've got an entirely new tiling system, um, which is highly optimized um, across the board, inc including HTML5. Um, so that it's fast enough that you can have many layers of tiles if you want. So you can have different tile sets on different texture pages um, and it will be rendered very quickly. On top of that, uh, we're also allowing each tile to be animated uh, without any cost. So basically your entire world could be moving um, and you're not going to see any performance uh, impact on your game. Uh, this is all controlled within the ID, so you can build up all your animations within the ID and then preview them in the room editor itself. We also do um, auto-tiling in the ID, so we've got 16 and 47 tile auto-tiling. Um, and that basically means you can do things like your roads and walls, where there's got these funny connections for all your tile stuff, where you've got to usually manually put them all in. With thorough stuff, you can just draw them and it'll work out the tile to put in, and it saves you a huge amount of uh, editing time. The 16 tile one's very good for coastlines, it gives you nice curvy coastlines um, and natural formations. Uh, so we, we support both of those. The instance layer is basically where you put all your game logic. Um, so you have an object in GameMaker. Um, it's got lots of events. Um, so you would have create event, step event, draw event, and you could put input in there as well. So if key goes left, then you can do something for that specific thing. Um, we allow you to put in the uh, instances onto their own dedicated layers so that you can order them properly. So again, you could have a layer for baddies that you could put all those on, then you could have a layer for the player so that you know the ordering and the rendering is correct. And it's all controlled within the ID with just dragging stuff around. It makes sure that your game is presented just the way you want it to, instead of trying to guess with Z orders or, or anything like that. The asset layer is for just dumping visual effects. Um, in the past, if you wanted to do um, just an effect in Game Maker or have something in the room that just animates, you would have had to attach it to an object, an instance, and just have that 
animating away, but that took processor time. So what we've done now is we've done a, a layer that is specifically just for putting down graphics. So you could put your basic tile layer down, which is all grid-based, then you could put down sprites wherever you wanted, and these will just animate, and the engine will control it for you. You can make these procedurally as well, um, so that um, if you decide to add or remove these throughout the, the game, you can do that too. Everything within a room can be procedurally made. You can actually make your entire room procedurally if you want. So the, the tile system, you can go and procedurally generate an entire level and put tiles in. The API for the tile system is incredibly simple now. It's basically put a, a number in a slot and the tile appears there. So it's very simple. Um, paths are basically just paths you can define in the room so that you can put an object on it and it will move around this um, path. So for things like a baddie going a patrol route, you can draw it in the room, set the baddie on it, and he'll walk this path and just do that until you tell him to stop. Um, it's good for RPG games or uh, Zuma games that's got the kind of spiral thing. You can just set a ball going on this and it will just do it on its own without you having to worry about it. We added a whole new feature in uh, Game Maker 2 for level inheritance. Um, this is incredibly powerful. Um, there's two main ways of using this. One is to set up all your parameters um, in a master room so that you don't have to continually change them. In the past, if you've had 100 levels, you would have to set up the different views in every single level so that you can say, okay, I want a game to be 320 by 200 or 1600 by 1200, and then if you wanted to change that, you'd have to go back through every single level and change these numbers, which was a, a, a nightmare. So what we've done now is with the level inheritance, you can put all these settings into a master room, inherit from that, and it will get these settings, which means you only have to change these global settings once. On top of that, we've decided to allow it to inherit anything that's actually in the room. So if you're doing something like an RPG game and you want to represent the different seasons of the game, then instead of having to do four entirely new worlds, where it's more or less just the tile set changing, we allow you to use the level inheritance to put everything into the primary world, inherit from that, and then just change tile sets, for example, in the other levels. That way you're getting three levels completely free without having to do any work for them. We allow you also to hide any individual part of the inheritance. So whether it be a tile or an instance, you can go and just delete that section. So again, you could have your main level that could be ginormous, and then you decide, I'm gonna destroy this castle in a child, just remove that part and draw in another section. So for bringing down large maps, or even just making slight variations um, for um, a, a falling block game, this allows you to do it without having to remake these levels all the time. Particularly if you want to go back and change the original level that everything's based on, you don't have to go and change all the levels that were based on that afterwards. As I said before, we've got a new tiling system in there as well. Um, if you scale tiles, there is an issue with cracks appearing in them. Unless you generate your tiles properly, each tile has to have a little border or a smear around it. Um, this can be really annoying to actually do manually. Um, so we've built that into Game Maker. So if you just put your tile set in, we will auto-generate that, and all your tile maps will just scale without any cracks or seams. Um, I did say we had uh, built-in tile animation. Um, if you create your tiles as what we call Power 2 tiles, which is tile animations of 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on animations, um, we will automatically animate these in the game. Um, this is free to do. So even if you've got a huge level with many tile layers, that doesn't cost anything. So every single tile in your room could be moving and animating without any cost to the game at all. And that's a big change from previous and also a really nice addition to, as far as the visualization goes. So again, you have an RPG game, say, you can have your little flowers and water all moving and animating. You don't need any code to do that. You just get your artist to go and knock themselves out designing all these little movements. And then the level designer can go and paint these everywhere. Even for um, if you were doing a, a bejeweled style game, the little things in the corner could just be animating away without you having to actually worry about doing them. Um, the last thing we've got on here is the um, advanced brushed editor. So if you're doing a game that is a large map, you spend a lot of your time 
cutting and pasting parts around the map that you use a lot. So if you have a building made out of lots of tiles, um, you have to construct this all the time or you cut and paste it all over the place. So what we've done is we've put um, basically like a prefab brush system in so that when you're defining your tiles, you can go and build these sections that you've got off to the side. And then when you're editing, you can just a single click picks it up and you can paste it so you can stamp these into the room. So for building large levels, it's a godsend. It, it just lets you throw levels together incredibly quickly because you're just cutting and pasting with single clicks um, for selections. We had um, a demo level that was created by one of our uh, designers and in the past it was taking them um, days to do, whereas here he could do it in an hour because you didn't have to sit and concentrate doing all these um, levels all the time. Now, I did say at the start, we've, we've worked hard to make the, um, the workflow much better. Um, instead of sitting with windows on top of windows all the time, what we've decided to do is make it a tabbed environment so that you've basically got each tab as a workspace that you can put all your sprites or objects or scripts in. Um, each workspace is a zoomable space. You can zoom in and, in and out it to see what's there. You can rip them off onto different monitors. You can just move things around however you want. That makes it incredibly flexible for how you want to work. If you've got multiple monitors, you can just spread your work out and see as much as possible all at once. Instead of having your resources just as we define them, we also let you define them the way you want to. So if you're doing level design, you can actually make a view of the resource tree on the, on the right or left, you can move it about, so that it's just your level assets, which means you don't have any scripts or anything in there to get in the way. For designers, it gets rid of an awful lot of stuff that they don't need to know about. And it's incredibly easy to use. You just copy one and then start moving things into it. Um, so each level or each designer can have their own view of your game's assets. Um, we've also added the ability to, as you paint in one, if you start painting in the, the image editor, you will actually see the changes real time in the room editor and all the other assets. So that means if you're doing tile sets, you could be editing the tile and you could see it change in the room editor, which gives you very fast feedback as to what that's going to look like. So for building up actual auto tiling stuff or just making small details to see the overall view, it's very powerful. Level inheritance I've already spoken about. Um, being able to carry forward um, whole levels without actually having to change very much. For settings, it's great. For more advanced things, as I say, to be able to delete sections that you don't want, um, it, it does help an awful lot as well. Um, as you go and export to many different platforms, um, you will find that you'll have different settings for each platform. So you might have a different splash screen for Android, they might have a different one for iOS and so on. So we've got a config system in there that you can swap back and forward between. Just create a config, set what store it's going to, because you may have different stores even for Android. You might be going up to Amazon or Google, and they might have different settings in there for themselves. But using configs, it means that you can manage all these splash screens without having to actually have lots of code in there to, to deal with these settings. Um, as it says, it changes all the icons and splash screens. So it means a, de a designer or something can go in and just set all these things up for each of them. You don't have to get into funny build scripts or anything for it. Uh, there's decent searching in there now as well that will go across the entire product. Uh, we've got a new bookmarking system so that any point in the IDE, whether it's a different tab, a different window, you can put a bookmark down and then you can jump to it instantly. So no matter where you are, you can hit a couple of keys and it will take you straight there. So navigation around uh, the whole ID is very fast. You can do most of it from the keyboard if that's the way you want, or mouse navigation is there as well. And then lastly, we do have a full cross-platform source level debugger. So if you're on an Android or iOS device, you can hook up a debugger and debug to it wirelessly. So if your game's not running quite right or there's a funny texture set up on there, the debugger will help you get through that. So, very quickly, um, Gaming Studio 2 has evolved from what we had already was a very fast system um, to give you a, a, a much smoother experience, um, much more powerful IDs and, uh, and APIs in there. 
Um, we still think it's the fastest tool to develop with to get your game to market. It does cover many different platforms. We do Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, HTML5, uh, Windows UWP, which is the different phones, Windows, all the different tablets, and Xbox. And we do Xbox One and PS4, and we have more platforms coming. And it is just a drop-down menu to export to these, so it's very fast. It is completely de um, dedicated to doing 2D games. The IDE is plug -inable. At some point in the near future, we will allow people to write their own plugins into the IDE, making it even more powerful. And we are expecting users to make plugins and put them on our marketplace so you'll get more quality of life tools. Um, and it is the, the fastest cross-platform cross development tool that we've come across. We did use it for a long time to make games ourselves, um, and we did churn out games at a very fast pace. So it's not just us standing up here saying that. And that's it. If there's any questions, thank you. Um, Windows version is $99 at the moment, it's an open beta, um, but that's a one-time purchase, you, you make it and you, uh, for 2.0 you, you make as many games as you want, there's no royalties or anything. Um, iOS Android will be $399, HTML5 is $149, Windows UWP is $399 and we've not announced any of the, the console stuff yet. <laughs>